So here's a question for you. Would you benefit from ongoing support to improve your sales conversations and ultimately close more business? The Sales Maven Society offers you daily support for your urgent sales questions, an extensive library of bite-sized trainings to hone your selling skills, and monthly live coaching calls where you receive individualized coaching from me specific to your business so that you're able to remove any bottlenecks in your sales process. This is the most robust sales coaching program around for an incredible value of only $147 a month. And you can join now for your first month for only $47. You get access to absolutely everything, including the live coaching calls with me. Come check it out and see if this is the place for you to really elevate your business to the next level. You can do this by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash society, hit the join now button. And then when it takes you to that page, enter this code, the number four, the number seven, and the word trial, T-R-I-A-L. So 47 trial, all one word, and you'll be a member. I can't wait to see you in there. Now, here's the podcast. sales conversations make you feel awkward or pushy, it's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Roush, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Hey, welcome to the Sales Maven Show. Thanks for being here with me today. Today's episode is about avoiding this sales question and how it kills the deal. (laughs) So super excited to jump into this topic with you. It's something that's been coming up a lot lately with clients and uh, something that I love to chat about with people. So I hope you'll stick around till the end and see what the nuggets are that you can take away. Before we jump into the content, I just want to thank those of you who continue to rate and review the podcast, who continue to share it, who continue to send me feedback from the episodes. I will say it is truly delightful to hear from you as a listener when you enjoy uh, a particular episode or you have a takeaway that you implement and you get some type of a result from, like it is just an absolute delight. Or when somebody shows up and says, hey, my friend so-and-so introduced me to your show and I've been, you know, listening to the episodes. So thank you so much for doing that. I'm, I'm really grateful. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this little, this little pesky sales question that people tend to avoid and why you don't wanna avoid it. I'm gonna give you some language on how to ask it and... <laughs> Why, when you when you ignore this particular question, how it really derails the deal, how it will probably cost you a lot of time and energy and frustration because you just didn't ask this question. So you might not be surprised to know that the question is the budget question, the investment question. The question is, what are you looking to invest? in this type of a service? Or what is your budget to hire a expert or a consultant or whatever it is that you do? You know, what are you looking to spend? If you're not asking this question, and you are flying blind in putting together proposals and putting offers out there to people, chances are, you've wasted a ton of time and energy. And also, it gets into your mental like, mindset, you know, I'm so diligent about trying to protect my own mindset, which maybe it's because I need a lot of protection. And I feel like a lot of my clients need it as well. Because they get in with like, it gets into your head when people like dismiss your offers, when they ghost you on your proposals, it makes you think nobody wants to hire you, nobody will pay your fees. And that's not true. You just missed an important step in the selling process. So it is super, super important that you ask this question, especially if you're going to spend any time or energy putting together 
I don't even care if it's just an email outlining your offer. If it's an email outlining your offer, if it's a full on proposal, you need to ask this question. And if you're not asking this question, again, a lot of times you're just wasting time. I had a client who recently hired me to do a strategy session with her and she hired me when we got on the call she was talking about, you know, she's working on this proposal. She wanted some feedback on the way the proposal was outlined. She wanted me to help her structure some pricing. And so, you know, the first thing we do is, you know, we start looking at the proposal and how she's got it laid out and I'm giving her some feedback on it and how to tweak it, make it more reader friendly, how to make it more impactful uh, to increase her chances of getting this deal. And then when we get into the pricing uh, options that we're laying out. And I and I asked now, what has the client said they're looking to spend or invest? And she's like, oh, um, I don't know. I'm like, well, what do you mean you don't know? You, you talk to them, right? Yeah. They asked for a proposal. Yeah. But you didn't ask this question? No. What stopped you from asking this question? Well, she hemmed and hawed. And then, you know, she kind of embarrassingly admitted that she was afraid to ask the question because she was afraid of what their answer would be. Now, I get it. And I'm not, this is not about shaming anybody because I get it. It's a hard question sometimes to ask, but it is a complete waste of your time. If we don't know this, how can we really price it to like earn the business? I mean, we could just go back and say like, the price is the price. That's totally fine. But she didn't necessarily need to hire me for that piece <laughs> if her price is her price. If she, but she's asking me to tell her what to price it at. I can't tell you what to price it at if I don't know what the customer is willing to invest and spend. You have to know this information. And if you're afraid to ask, chances are it's because you know they're not going to hire you. Or you suspect they're not going to spend the money that they really have to spend in order to get the service that you deliver. And so who are you hurting here? Yourself. Like really, you're really, you're hurting yourself. You're getting into your head. And so I'm saying this, I promise you, with a lot of love and care and support of you and your business, you have to ask this question. So, you know, so, okay, so we've finished the proposal and, you know, I worked through what pricing was going to make sense for her, for her business. You know, it's not that I, I can't do it. It's just that now, uh, you know, so now we, you know, get the proposal sent out. And of course the client comes back and they were like, wow, this is, this is not even at all in our, in our budget. So she spent all this time and energy and frankly money in investing in doing a strategy session with me to do this, had she asked the question, she could have easily just said to the client, you know, based on what their budget is, like, here was a kind of off the shelf type offer that she could have presented to them, and they could have chosen that or not, not spent a ton of time putting together something that's custom, some type of custom proposal. So super important that you ask this question that you don't spin your wheels. Um, you know, I had this happen uh, probably, gosh, a couple weeks ago with another one of my clients. She's one of my Voxer clients. I love coaching over Voxer, by the way. Man, that is that is one of my favorite ways to coach clients <laughs> because it's so fast, right? So she's got this question. She sends me a Voxer message and I can answer the question. And it was an opportunity that um, somebody who knew her knows how amazing she is and the quality of work that she puts out and her content, and asked if they could get access to a piece of her content, and said, I'm willing to pay you for it. So, so then she's, you know, gets excited, like, oh, this could be another possible business opportunity. She never really thought about offering this piece of content kind of as its own standalone. So she reaches out to me, she's very excited about it. I'm excited for her. And I said, well, okay, great. So let's talk about, you know, what makes sense for you, because it is going to require some time and effort for you to pull this piece of content and put it into some type of a form that it's easy to like transition to this paying client. How much is he willing to invest? 
And she was like, oh, I, I didn't ask. I was like, well, we're not going to work on it until you ask that question. So go ask the question. And so she, you know, she went back and asked the question. And, you know, we were thinking based on the amount of time, energy, and expertise that this person was going to get access to, we're in the thousands. When she went back and asked the person, he was like, well, I was just thinking like less than $100. Okay. Like, there's no reason that somebody can't ask that question. Like, hey, would you be willing to give me access to your, you know, brain trust for a hundred dollars. And her answer would have clearly just been like, thanks for asking. That's not an option. Like, no, thank you. I'll respectfully decline taking that, that, uh, and moving any forward with it. Right. So then we move on, which is, which is great because now we didn't waste a ton of energy and time putting this together because she was afraid to ask this question. So again, I want to just encourage you Now, one of the pushbacks that I get, people say, well, when I ask people this question, they never have an answer for me. Or they go, well, we don't know because we've never hired anybody to do what you're doing before, so we don't know. Well, if that's the case, then you give them a range, right? So when you ask the question, what are you looking to invest in something like this? Or what's your budget for bringing in an outside consultant? And the client responds with, we don't really know. We've never done this before. Then you give a range and you say like this, you could say, well, typically a project like this could range anywhere from, you know, a thousand dollars a month to $10,000 a month. Given that range, is that within, within what you guys are looking to invest? Wait, let them respond. Don't like keep explaining. Don't tell a bunch of story. Just ask the question and then wait and see what they say next. Because if they go, oh, between 1,000 and 10,000, yeah, that's totally what we were, you know, yeah, we're probably, we're probably not willing to spend more than 5,000. Okay, now we know we've got something that we can put together and offer to give back to them if, it, if this is some type of custom proposal that you're putting together, right? But if you say, if you give this range, like 1,000 to 10,000 or whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the range is. And they go, oh, yeah, no, we were thinking like a one-time payment of, you know, $400. Then you, then you know, this is not the right fit. This is not the right client or the offer that they're asking for, what they really need, they're, they're not willing to pay for. So in that case, you could offer them like, well, I do have a do, you know, do-it-yourself course. You can get that for $400 or whatever the answer is, or it doesn't seem like this is the right fit for us. So um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to chat with you today. And I wish you well on, you know, finding the right solution for yourself. Bless and release, right? It's okay. It is absolutely okay. This makes me think of another little thing that comes up often, um, because one of the things I feel really strongly about, and I, if you've listened to the podcast a few times, you've probably heard me say it more than once, is having some pricing listing on your website. And uh, I was having this conversation with one of my private coaching clients the other day. And she was saying, you know, well, in my industry, nobody puts pricing on their website, Nikki. And, uh, And she knows, you know, this is a client I've worked with for a long time. She knows how adamant I am about having some pricing on your website for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of podcast episodes around this. And, uh, but this whole idea of like, well, in my industry, nobody puts pricing on their website. I can't tell you, I wish I had like $5 for every time somebody says in my industry, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Like I wish I had $5 for every time a client says that to me, I would have a significant increase to my revenue in the, in, uh, in the year. So the thing that I wanted to, and the thing that I did say back to her is, you know, this idea of people not putting pricing on their website they're not doing it because they're like, I'm one of those people, like, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. And even if they're trying to pretend that that's their whole motto, it's more based out of fear. That's why they're not putting pricing on their website, because they're afraid that somebody's going to see the price and not call them. But the actual opposite happens. 
Think about how you buy. If you went to somebody's website and they didn't have pricing on their website, do you now feel uncomfortable? Because now you have to call and ask for their pricing. Does that put you in a weird position? Whereas if you can just go and look and see what's the price for something like this, then you can make a decision. Yes, I want to move forward with this, or maybe I'll look around, or maybe I want to have a conversation with this person. It's not this like snobby, like pretentious, oh, if you have to ask for my pricing, you can't afford it. That's, that's not what it is. It's based out of fear, nine times out of 10. Now, I'm happy to hear from you if you feel to- totally different. Every once in a while, somebody will be like, there's a reason I don't put pricing on my website. Okay, nine out of 10 reasons that people give me are fear-based reasons. <laughs> it's not truly, like, it's not helping to grow their business. So you've got to ask about what the budget is. You have to be willing to stand in your place of power and credibility. I want you to be proud of your pricing, frankly. And so I want you to be okay asking the question about budget. I want you to be okay of giving people a range. This is how you will really elevate your credibility in these conversations. If you hem and haw, if you're afraid to ask these type of questions in your sales process, it diminishes your credibility. It diminishes you in the eye of the, the prospective buyer. And it, it creates this imbalance in the, in the power dynamic in the relationship. You know, I want there to be a, a balance of power between you and the prospective client. They shouldn't hold more power over you. You shouldn't hold more power over them. And so by creating, by being willing to ask these types of questions, by being willing to stand in your place of credibility and be really clear about, you know, this is what some, a project like this would cost, you know, is that within your budget? And ask that question very directly. That puts you on even footing with your prospect. Okay. So important for the sales process. We want people to respect us. We want, I mean, think about who you want to pay money to when you're in the position of being the buyer. You want to give money, you want to pay your money to somebody who's going to deliver, who confidently knows their stuff right? And the sales conversation is a way to set yourself up for that, that credibility, that authority, that like you're setting the stage for the relationship. What's it going to be like to work with you? If you're afraid, if you're showing that fear by not asking that question, and you're going in blind, you're spending a lot of time and energy that you just don't need to spend on these things. And I cannot say this enough, your ideal client truly is somebody who will pay you money for your services or your products. If you run into somebody and they won't invest in, in, and they're not willing to invest that type of money in what it is that you're offering, they are then not your ideal client. You cannot have an ideal client who won't pay your fees. That that It just doesn't work. It's like it does not compute. It's like you trying to say one plus one is like four. It's not. Okay. So your ideal client has to be willing to pay you money and you have to be willing to ask the question. And it's okay if they don't have the answer. It's okay for you to give a range. If you're just avoiding the question out of fear, you are you're absolutely not going to get the deals that you think you're going to get. And you're spending a lot of time and energy on things that are just, frankly, a waste of time. So I say this again with love and support of you. I want you to go out and confidently close more business. This is the, you know, my mission in the world is to teach people how to confidently have sales conversations so that they can make a bigger impact in their own life and in their business, for the employees, you know, on their team, for their families and for the community at large. So please, please ask this question. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. I, again, it's a delight to hear from you, to know that you're there, to see the, you know, the listenership of the podcast continue to grow. It is an absolute delight. And if I can support you on 
getting some clarity, boosting your confidence in these conversations, giving you some ways to say this, then reach out. Let's work together. There's lots of ways for us to work together. There's the Sales Maven Society, which is the group coaching program. There's my private coaching opportunities. I'd I'd love to support you one-on-one if that's kind of your jam and also encourage you to take part in the in the community the sales maven society you'll learn so much there so anyway reach out if i can be of support to you have a great rest of your day thank you so much for listening take care thanks for listening to sales maven visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com/maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills